Hello and welcome to this brief demonstration of ErgoWeb's Job Evaluator Toolbox, also known as JET, which is a powerful software suite of industrial ergonomics assessment, analysis, and design methods. Let's get started by looking at some customization options. You can customize by adding your own logo. You can set up user groups. You can enable or disable visibility of any of the 14 tools. You can also set your own cut points for some of the tools. Speaking of tools, you can always access it, the tools from the pull-down menu at the top of the page. It appears on every page. But this is a, one of the very popular ways is to look at the tool selection matrix, which is a quick and easy way to understand how these tools apply, what kind of tasks they apply to, what kind of risk factors they're good at looking at. Uh, so many users start here. All of our methods are based on published literature or industry accepted methodologies and everything is well backed up with documentation online so you can pick it, pick it up and look at it and understand how it works at any time. We also provide you with a number of data entry methods including uh, uh, you can download a paper form which you can take in the field with you and uh, mark up on your own with your clipboard. This is an example from the uh, Rogers uh, Kodak method. Um, you can also use our Excel data entry sheet, so you can fill out an Excel form as I'm demonstrating here. Uh, so you answer some predefined fields, you save this out, and then you upload it. And you will notice that when this file is uploaded, the numbers change. So we've actually added the data there. Let's take a look at another method. This time we will look at the strain index, popular method, and this time I'll use the HTML forms and I'll just uh, demonstrate by pulling down uh, some menus and answering some questions and getting a report. Now let's look at this report for a moment. Uh, there's some standard boilerplate that comes with it, but on the left you see some new options have appeared and they're all about customizing and saving out in different formats. This is very flexible. We want this to integrate with your systems. We don't want to force you into our system. Um, all the data is stored on your computer. The com calculations are done on the fly. So we don't store your data. We don't see your data. We don't need your data. It's all yours. Uh, this is an example of a customization page where you can change the reports to fit your desires and customize them. Then you can export them into one of these other formats and add pictures, do whatever you want. You can upload them to your databases. Uh, uh, very flexible again. Let's take a look at the revised NIOSH lifting equation, very common method. Um, in this case, there's a reference figure that goes with it and uh, we can pull that up anytime. I'm gonna quickly fill in some data here. So we can take a look at what uh, kind of report we're going to get. This time uh, you'll see the data summary. Here's what you entered. Here are the conclusions and here are the recommendations. Every tool provides recommendations. And typically you get a red, green or yellow indicator of the level of risk. Uh, the Liberty Mutual tables, or the Snook and Seriolo tables as they're often called. Well, let's take a quick look at that. Um, again, I'm going to uh, answer some predefined questions here and uh, in this case I'm saying I want 70 percent of the female population to be capable of this task. I'm going to leave some questions unanswered though because I'm still not sure uh, early in my design let's say and what I get is a set of tables that are reduced from the biggest the big data set that Snook and Seriolo uh, published uh, it's still quite a bit of data here. I have to page through it. Um, but let's say as we've looked at this problem, we've reviewed the data and we've now gone back to the engineering team and we say, well, let's narrow this problem down. Let's, uh, what if they were only going to travel 20 feet and we were going to put the handles at this medium height? Uh, what would that do? Okay, well, uh, uh, the data set is greatly reduced, so we now are narrowing in on an answer. Here's another very popular method, the 2D biomechanical model. Um, I'm demonstrating here the, uh, there are some predefined population options, and if you notice the little stick figure changes uh, as we change the data. Uh, if I decide I don't want to use just typical populations, but instead I want to enter individual data, I can do that. 
uh, lift or lower, push or pull, both hands, one hand. Let's give it an object weight. Um, I can, if I know what the horizontal and vertical distances are, I can set those and it will automatically snap to it. Uh, here I'm demonstrating what happens if I uh, fix the hand locations, which sometimes we do that because we know everybody has to lift from the same place. Uh, it's the size of the person that changes, not the location of the box. So we might want to fix the hands. Uh, now I'm back to freestyle and I'm going to manipulate the posture any way I can. I could type in angles if I had them. Uh, oh, my, looks like I've made an error. I only gave it 100 or 14 pounds. Let's change it to a body weight of 140, and now it's going to do my calculations for me. And in this case, uh, it says that this person could do that uh, in terms of back compressive force. It does note that only 94% would have the hip strength to do it in that particular posture. Uh, even though it's a green situation, it did give us some uh, conclusions. Well, that concludes a brief JET demo. It does a lot more than we could look at today, but we invite you to contact us to learn more. Thank you.